Hi, my name is Jay and in this video we are going to talk about Minander or Milind as he was called in Buddhist tradition. Now, when it comes to the Indo-Greek kings, we find that it is only Minander who is clearly mentioned in the Indian literature. And when it comes to the sources that talks about Minander's life, we have the classical western sources. Apart from the classical western sources, there is a text called Milind Panna or the questions of Milind. This text is a dialogue between Minander and a Buddhist monk named Nagasen. The text mainly deals with Buddhist philosophical ideas on the nature of soul, the eightfold path of the Buddha and about Nirvana. But apart from the philosophical aspect of the text, we find that in this text there is a great deal of historical information that deals with Minander's life and about the time in which Minander ruled. According to Milind Panna, Minander was born in a village named Kalasi. Milind Panna tells us that the village of Kalasi was situated near the city of Alasand. Alasand was the Pali name for Alexandria and most scholars believe that this Alexandria was the Alexandria in the Caucasus. The Alexandria in the Caucasus is the modern day city of Begram which is situated north of Kabul. Now the exact date of Menander's birth is not known but most scholars are of the opinion that Menander was born around 180 BC. Menander's father was Demetrius II and we find that during a campaign in Gandhar, there was a revolt in Bactria. In Bactria, a Greek official named Eucratides had proclaimed himself as king and in order to crush this revolt, Demetrius II travelled from Gandhar to Bactria. After reaching Bactria, there were several battles between Eucratides and Demetrius II. In the end, Eucratides managed to kill Demetrius II. After the killing of his father, in order to safeguard his life, Menander decided to flee to Takshashila. During this period, Takshashila was the capital of another Indo-Greek kingdom which was ruled by Agathocles. One of the interesting thing about Agathocles is that Agathocles was the enemy of Menander's father but somehow he provided a safe sanctuary to Menander. Now the main reason why Agathocles did so was because he wanted to safeguard his kingdom. The reason why Agathocles kingdom was in danger was because there was no male successor. Agathocles had only a daughter and during this period, the western territories of Agathocles' kingdom that lay west of Khabar Pass was conquered by Eucratides. And Agathocles knew that the next target for Eucratides was his kingdom. And in order to safeguard his kingdom and provide a male successor, he decided to marry his daughter Agathoclea to Menander. And we find that after some time, around 165 BC, when Agathocles died, Menander became the ruler of this kingdom. When Menander ascended the throne, the first thing he did was he decided to conquer his homeland. And around 155 BC, he managed to conquer all the territories that lay south of the Hindu Kush region. Now, Menander decided to shift his attention towards India and in order to better manage and organize a further expedition into the plains of North India, he decided to shift his capital from Takshashila to the city of Sakala. Now we know that the city of Sakala was situated east of Takshila. Apart from this, we do not know anything else about Sakala and that is why there is a great debate regarding the location of Sakala. Some historians argue that the city of of Sialkot was the city of Sakala. But I personally believe that the city of Sakala was situated close to the Jammu hills. Now in this video, I will not go into this debate. What we do know is that Menanda shifted his capital from Takshila to Sakala. Now after this shift, the first expedition which Menander led, he was able to conquer territories up to Sonipat. And we find that from now on, his boundary touched the Yamuna river. From this region, 
archaeologists have found large amount of menander's coin and the reason why there was large amount of menander's coin present in this region was menander stayed in this region for a long time the reason for this long stay was that menander was planning a great expedition into the plains of north india the main information about this expedition comes from the indian sources particularly the yug puran according to yug puran the yavana king of sakala invaded the madhadesh so the yavana king of sakala was menander the madhadesh is the region between the doab of yamuna and ganga and up to the city of prayag most scholars are of the opinion that the invasion of madhadesh by menander happened around the end of pushyamitra shunga's reign during this period the shunga empire was much reduced and the shunga empire did not control the madhadesh region in madhadesh region there were several small kingdoms that ruled and the shunga empire had control over the city of patliputra and apart from the city of patliputra the city of vidisha was also controlled by the shunga empire in this invasion of madhadesh yug puran tells us that the first target of menander was the city of mathura during this period the city of mathura was controlled by mathuras and we find that the city of mathura was a great commercial capital during this period and menander was able to easily capture the city of mathura after the capture of mathura menander crossed the yamuna river and entered the kingdom of panchal during this period the kingdom of panchal was ruled by mitra dynasty we do not know anything else about the kings of mitra dynasty because there is no written information about them but what we do know is that menander was able to easily capture the panchal kingdom as well now after capturing the city of mathura and the kingdom of panchal the next target for menander's army was the city of saket or ayodhya the siege of saket is mentioned in yug puran but apart from yug puran in patanjali's mahabhashya we find that there is a mention of yamuna army laying siege on the city of saket most scholars believe that this yamuna army was the army of menander and we find that after this siege menander was able to conquer the city of saket after the conquest of saket the next target of menander's army was the city of patliputra the city of patliputra was the political center of north india and whoever controlled patliputra controlled the whole north india for the conquest of patliputra menander also got help from the city of mathura and the kingdom of panchal from saket menander marched his army eastward and soon they were on the gates of patliputra so the army that reached on patliputra included the soldiers from mathura region as well as from the kingdom of panchal we find that during this period the city of patliputra was fortified by mud and timber walls and yug puran tells us that the yamunas were able to destroy these fortifications and they sacked the city after the conquest of patliputra according to a buddhist legend menander built a stoop in patliputra having conquered the city of patliputra menander did not stay there for long according to the yug puran there was internal fight among the yamunas and that is why menander left the city of patliputra and traveled westwards there was also another reason why menander left the city of patliputra this reason comes from odisha and in odisha there is a inscription called hathi gumpa inscription this inscription was commissioned by kharvel who was the king of kaling now in this inscription kharvel tells us that because of him the yamuna king who had conquered patliputra decided to flee back to the city of mathura most scholars believe that the yavana king which kharvel is talking about is menander and if menander retreated from patliputra to mathura that means that from now on the boundary of menander's kingdom was up to the yamuna river and it is quite natural why menander retreated back to the yamuna river because Yamuna river provided a natural defense against any attack from the east another reason why menander had to leave the city of patliputra had to do with the situation in bactria 
During this period, we find that the kingdom of Bactria, which is situated north of the Oxus, was conquered by the Scythians. The Scythians were the nomads from the Central Asia. So, in order to protect his territories that lay south of the Hindu Kush region, Menander decided to retreat from Patliputra to the Mathura region. Now, there is also some evidence that suggests that Menander also tried to capture the territories that lay south of his kingdom. According to Patanjali's Mahabhashya, we are told that the Yavana army were besieging the city of Madhyamika. The city of Madhyamika was situated near Chittor. And if Yavana army were besieging Madhyamika, this suggests that this region was also conquered by Menander. Having conquered large amount of territories, Menander now became interested in Buddhism. He adopted the title of Dharmaraja and we can see that he also issued some coins that had the Buddhist symbol of Dharma Chakra on it. Menander ruled for at least 30 years and we do not know exactly how Menander died but according to western sources Menander died during a campaign. But according to the Buddhist sources we are told that in the end Menander renounced the world and joined the Sangha. And after his death, he attained Nirvana. There is an interesting information regarding Menander's death in Greek accounts. We are told that after the death of Menander, his ashes were equally distributed between different groups of people. And these groups of people decided to erect monuments over Menander's ashes. This practice of erecting monuments over ashes of a person is similar to the Buddhist practice and this suggests that Menander had become a devout Buddhist at the end of his life. The exact date of Menander's death is not known but most scholars are of the opinion that Menander died around 130 BC. After the death of Menander, his son was only 12 years old. So his wife Agathoclea ruled for some time and after some time both mother and the son ruled jointly and when Menander's son reached manhood he became the sole ruler of Menander's empire and his name was Strato first. Now after the death of Menander we find that the Greek rule in India began to decline and in the next video we are going to talk about that and I will be posting that video here. Now if you want Want to know more about the Indo-Greeks, I have published two videos earlier and you can watch these videos here. Thank you for watching.